In this video, the starter Pokemon you just encountered from my Brazil-inspired Zony region will finally be evolving. But first, in the spirit of Pokemon Evolution, I also have a couple of other new Zony Pokemon that evolve that I'd like to introduce in this video as well. Starting with the Zony region's Pika clone, Agatsui. Agatsui can be seen scurrying throughout the Zony region on a sunny day. They use the spots on their body to absorb solar energy, storing it in their rump and converting it into electricity or heat. It's naming a play on Agudi and Atsui, the Japanese word for hot. Agatsui is inspired by two species of Brazilian rodents, the first being its namesake the Agudi, the red rumped Agudi in particular, hence its little red rump. But it's also inspired by another Brazilian species, the Paca, known for its spots. Since they look so similar and are often confused, I decided to mix the two together. However, I wanted to incorporate the key features from both species, not only into its design, but concept. So being an electric and fire type Pokemon, I decided to base it in solar energy, making the pocket spots act as solar panels, absorbing sunlight and converting it into energy for it to use, once again, like its dex entry stated, generating electricity or heat, most of which being stored in its rump, which is why it's red as it's warmed by all this solar energy. As its dex entry suggests, it can be found all throughout the Zony region, but only on sunny days in open and warm areas. It also has a new signature move, Solar Spark, which is an electric type attack that not only can potentially burn the target, but also does double damage in harsh sunlight. Although, like Solar Beam, it also has the drawback of only doing half damage while in the rain. And as I already teased, this Pika clone, like the Palmy line, will eventually evolve, but into what exactly? I'll give you a hint, expect the unexpected. Let me know what you think its evolution could look like in the comments below. I'd love to see what you have to say. And if you like what you see, please make sure to go support an artist astray over on Instagram as he is the talented artist I worked with and commissioned to help bring this little cutie to life. But next I'd like to introduce another new Pokemon, the Tadpole Pokemon Dartad, which has four different forms, each with a different design and type that it can be caught in. Dartad evolves into Sapodair, Sapo being Portuguese for frog, and Poder meaning power, as this Pokemon is based on the colorful poison dart frog found throughout South America. Like the poison dart frog, it has several color variations, each with a different type and shooting an elemental dart of that type, all of which inspired by real colorations of the poison dart frog. So the leaf pattern shoots leaf darts, the flame pattern shoots fire darts, the rain pattern shoots aqua darts, and the thunder pattern shoots electrical darts. This signature move, Elemental Dart, changes types too, depending on its form as well. And once again, it has to be caught in the form you want it in, with its leaf and flame pattern typically found on sunny days, and its rain and thunder pattern typically found in the rain. Although their environments can also be a factor of where you can find each form. For example, you'll find the rain pattern near the water, or the leaf pattern in forested areas, or the fire pattern in the dry or desert-like areas, and so on and so forth. Sapodair evolves into Elementode using an elemental stone for its respective type. So a leaf stone for the leaf pattern, fire stone for the flame pattern, water stone for the rain pattern, and thunder stone for the thunder pattern. But you'll just have to wait a little bit longer to see what Elementode and its forms looks like. Dartad and Sapodair were both done by the talented artist Tubes underscore AZ. So if you aren't already following him, do yourself a favor and please make sure to do so. Okay, so let's do a quick recap of the Zony starter Pokemon and finally take a look at each of their mid-stage evolutions. Naturally indolent and aloof, Idleaf mosey around the treetops of the lush rainforest to avoid having to interact with anyone that may wander by below. Idleaf's mossy fur absorbs moisture to help it and any plant life it comes into contact with thrive regardless of their habitat. Idleaf is inspired by sloths, with the foliage on its head, especially the leaves, around its eyes resembling a carnival mask. At level 18, Idleaf evolves into Letargaia. They spend most of the day napping in the treetops so they can stay up late and party all night long, dancing with all of the Pokemon of the rainforest. Its name is a play on the Portuguese word for lethargic and Gaia as in the earth. It has a more lively pose while maintaining its leafy mask but now has longer arms and legs with more foliage added to its design. And if you look very carefully, the brown coloring on its body is slightly darker and it has something sprouting on top of its head. 
I wonder what that could be. Tell me what you think in the comments down below. Mbeek's fiery feathers burn bright with their vibrant colors and intensity fluctuating with its mood. Its flames are typically harmless due to its inherently jocose temperament, but they are also known to be quite feisty with their feathers set ablaze in a blistering blue when provoked. Mbeek is inspired by the Scarlet Macaw, with the plumage around its beak resembling a jester's hat. At level 18, Mbeek evolves into Flare Arara, a play on Flare and Arara, which is a Portuguese word for parrot. These spirited and flamboyant Pokemon must always be the center of attention, igniting their fiery feathers, twirling around in circles, putting on a show for anyone who will watch. This evolution is obviously less round and even more jester-like, while still maintaining but also expanding upon its jester hat, and looks even more devious like it's up to no good. That being said, let me know what you think it will evolve into. Notably boisterous and bubbly, Scubara are excellent swimmers, spending most of their time submerged in water. Innately in tune with waves of sound, they have a remarkable repertoire of noises which they use to communicate with one another even while underwater. This dex entry is a reference to the fact that capybaras are not only semi-aquatic, but very vocal creatures using various sounds such as whistles, barks, chirps, and purrs to communicate, so I really wanted to lean into that. Scubara is based on capybaras, it has scuba diver flipper-like fins to reference the capybara's webbed feet with its large nostrils resembling a scuba mask. So as you can see, all three starters incorporate some sort of facewear into their design. At level 18, Scubara evolves into Corredor. Their powerful and diversive singing voice is said to be able to control the flow of the water, its name being a mix of the Portuguese word for chorus and rodent. As mentioned in Scubara's dex entry, it is a very vocal Pokemon, as I wanted to play on the fact that Capybara are such vocal creatures, once again using a variety of different sounds to communicate even underwater. So I wanted to play those musical qualities up even more as it now has music note shaped ears and isn't a dramatic singing pose, but it is a Capybara still and a water type so it keeps its webbed flipper feet and has developed a bubbly collar that resembles a life jacket. I can't wait for you to see this one's final stage because it's probably my favorite of the three, but you're gonna have to wait just a little bit longer. I'd love to hear where you think it's going though. I worked with the incredibly talented Fake Mons on all three of these starters, just like I did the first stages. He's one of my best friends in the community, and we worked really long and hard on all three stages of the starters because we know just how important the starters are for each region. We really took our time, and I couldn't be more pleased with how they turned out. So please make sure to go give him some love. Please let me know down below what you think of these new Pokemon or starter evolutions. Which is your favorite, what starter you'd pick at the moment, going off these two stages of course, and where you think the third stages will go, and what types they will gain after evolving. I'll see you soon as I have two Halloween specials planned this month, one for both Luika and the Zoni region, each introducing several spooky new Pokemon. So happy Halloween, I'll see you then.